Let's make this. <laughs> so excited. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this Tiffany top. It is my very own creation and I am so excited to share it with you because it is my very first top. And the fact that I would literally go to the store and buy this and yet I was able to make it with my own two hands, it's just blowing my mind. I'm super excited and I can't wait to share it with you. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell that way you don't miss any of my videos I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects tips and tricks fun giveaways and you are not gonna want to miss out this top that I'm wearing right now here he is what it looks like da, 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 da. it is a beginner friendly pattern the stitches that I am using are a single crochet double crochet stitch, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, chaining, and a treble crochet. If you are familiar with all of these stitches, you are good to go. If any of those stitches had you a little, uh, not sure what that is, or I'm not very comfortable with that stitch yet, I would recommend that you check that stitch out, make yourself familiar with that stitch, and then come back to this pattern because I am just showing you how to make this pattern. I'm not necessarily showing you how to do the stitch. Make sense? This is an extra large size. So I'm going to provide for you a small, medium, large, extra large, and a 2XL sizing chart, approximations. I made sure that my measurements met dimension for those foundation row chain counts and so on. But of course, everyone crochets a little different. Some people crochet tighter, looser, depending on the yarn that you use and the crochet hook that you use. This is going to be a guide for you that should get you approximately where you want to be. I am 5'7", and I generally wear a medium to a large size garment. This is an extra large Tiffany top that I made with my pattern. Okay, so this will give you kind of a guide on what the extra large looks like. Okay. I will also help you out in the pattern by sharing with you if you want to make an even larger size than I've provided or a smaller size, how you can figure that out and get the size that you want. Sound good? The pattern to this Tiffany top, I will put the website here at the bottom of the screen. All you have to do is pause the video, write that down, go to the website, print off the pattern and be ready to crochet with me. I will also include a link to this website in both the description section and the comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, print off the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. By purchasing this pattern, you are really supporting my creative process and everything that I went through to make this pattern, and I really appreciate that. But if you don't read patterns or reading patterns is difficult for you, or in general you just can't purchase the pattern, do not worry, this step-by-step -step tutorial will have instructions and I will walk you through how to make this Tiffany top and you will be good to go. All right, once you are ready to go, let's head straight over to what materials you're gonna need to make this Tiffany top. The materials that I use to make the Tiffany top include this Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend yarn. It is a size three weight, lightweight yarn, DK size yarn. It's 50% cotton, 50% polyester. It's machine washable and dryable. So I really wanted to make this top in a cotton type yarn, something breathable, really lightweight to wear, especially during the warmer months. And I wanted something that was easy to clean, easy to maintain, at least for my first top. So that is what I went with. If you would like to use a different yarn, different brand, different color, go for it. But I highly recommend that you stick with the same size. That way your dimensions will match my dimensions. I made what I'm wearing right now is an extra large size Tiffany top. So I used approximately 833 yards of this yarn, 761 meters of this yarn, 425 grams of this yarn, or approximately 15 ounces of this particular yarn. Okay, crochet hook. We're using a J10 or six millimeter crochet hook. You want your stitches loose. We do not want tight stitches, especially with the top. We want to go for loose and drapey. We do not want tight and rigid. We want comfy. 
That's what this top is all about, is comfing. Yarn needle tapestry needle for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Pair of scissors for us to cut our yarn at certain parts of the project that we need to cut our yarn. Using a measuring tape or ruler will be extremely helpful for you, especially during certain sections of this Tiffany top. If you wanna make adjustments to fit your body type, that'll be super helpful. It will also help us when we decide to make our armholes and our neck hole of the garment and keeping symmetry tree in all sides of the garment. So that'll help guide us. Also here I have eight stitch markers. Why eight stitch markers? We're going to use these to identify our armholes and our neck hole. So I'll use these two to block off where my armhole is going to go so I know where not to join the garment. So armhole, armhole. And then the neck hole right here, I will use these stitch markers to identify this is where I am joining the two panels together. This is where I am joining the two panels together. And this is where my neck hole will be. Okay, so they really guide you. They really help. I will provide for you a link to all of the materials that you see here in both the description section and the comment section of this video. So if you want access to anything that I have right here, just click on the link and you can purchase it and have it shipped directly to you. This is just for your convenience. All right, once you've gathered up all of your materials, let's head straight over to actually making the Tiffany top. To make this Tiffany top, all we are doing is making two rectangular sections. That's all we are doing. This top is extremely adjustable, very versatile, and easy to make slight adjustments if you need it longer or wider. Super easy. So every one of the sizes that I've provided for you, I provided a size for us women small, medium, large, extra large and 2XL. They all are 27 inches long from the top of your shoulder down, okay? So you will be able to make this top longer. All you have to do is add more rows in the in-between section that I talk about. Now for the width of your top, if you're going for a women's small, each rectangular section will be 18.5 inches wide, all right? The medium will be 20.5 inches wide. The large will be 22.5 inches wide. Extra large, 24.5 inches wide. And 2XL will be 26.5 inches wide. Here I will provide on the bottom of the screen the bust measurement or measure your widest part around your body, your top part of your body. That way this top will be comfortable. You want this top to fit loose. If you want to make a size larger than what I've provided or smaller than I've provided, all you have to focus on is the stitch count requirement of a multiple of six plus two. That's all you have to worry about. Once you get your width measurement, multiply that by two that will give you your circumference, and you want to get a circumference that is larger than your bust measurement or your largest top measurement, yours or the person that you're making this top for. Okay, so once you have selected the size that you want, go ahead, take your yarn. We're going to make our foundation row chain. Start with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Create your slip knot. Attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. Go ahead and make your foundation row chain, however many chains long that you need to meet your desired size. I will meet you at the end to show you how we get onto row one and what to do next. One, two, three, four, 61, 62, great. I am making a small size Tiffany top just to get through the instructions quicker for you. To move on to row one, all we are doing is double crocheting in the third chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V stitches, one, two, three, we will make a double crochet. Those first two stitches that we skipped do not count as a stitch, okay? So that very first double crochet is our very first stitch. What you are doing for row one is just making one double crochet stitch in each chain all the way across. That's all we are doing, setting ourselves up. You should end row one with two less stitches than were in your foundation row chain. So I had a foundation row chain of 62 chains, right? I will have a total of 60 double crochet stitches in row one. 
that will help you gauge how many stitches you will need in your first row. You really want to stay on count. It's super important that you do count periodically your the number of stitches in each row so that way you are keeping your sides even. Okay, so go ahead and make one double crochet stitch in each chain all the way across. I will meet you at the very end of row one to show you how we move on to row two and what we do for row two. All right, last double crochet stitch for row one. Perfect. All right, to move on to row two, we will chain two. One, two, turn your work. Great. That chain two does not count as a stitch. Okay, very important. The repeat pattern for row two will be front post double crochet around the first three stitches and then back post double crochet around the next three stitches. And then repeat front post double crochet around the next three stitches back post double crochet around the next three stitches. I will go ahead and work the first few stitches with you and then you will repeat that pattern all the way to the end of row two. Here we go. Front post double crochet, we're gonna yarn over. We are going to front post around the very first stitch here. So go behind it, poke your crochet hook between the first and the second double crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Next double crochet stitch, we will yarn over, go between the first and second double crochet stitch, behind the double crochet stitch, and poke between the second and third double crochet stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One more front post double crochet stitch. Perfect. And that is what we are looking at. The next three stitches we are going to make are back post double crochet stitches. So in this case, we're going to yarn over, take our crochet hook behind the stitches. I'm trying to make this so you can see what I'm doing. Go between that third and fourth double crochet stitch, push that double crochet stitch back and insert your crochet hook between that fourth and fifth double crochet stitch, yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you'll see the different look that that back post has compared to that front post. Okay, let's make two more back post double crochet stitches. So again, coming from behind the stitch, pushing it back, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, one more. I find it really easy or a lot easier to make post stitches when you're able to really separate the stitches, pull them apart and see what's going on. Because with post stitches, you're really working between the stitches themselves. All right, so that is three front posts. I'm gonna put that down so you can see it better. So that's three front post double crochets, three back post double crochets, and then repeat. So next I will make three front post double crochets, and then three back post double crochets. I will work these out. You repeat this all the way across for row two. I will meet you at the end of row two to show you how that looks, how we get onto row three, and how we work row three. Great, we are at the end of row two. I am making my last three 
back post double crochet stitches one two and at the very end here we have the last double crochet stitch and the chain two remember how I said the chain two does not count as a stitch so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the back post double crochet stitch there and then stop so one two three back post double crochet stitches and now I'm going to move on to row three chain two one two turn our work perfect for row three we want to elongate this pattern so if you see a front post double crochet in the row below you will make a front post double crochet for the row you were on if in the row below you see a back post double crochet you will repeat that and make a back post double crochet above that stitch we want to elongate the look of these stitches all the way up okay so let's go ahead and work row three together so this is a front post double crochet so I will make a front post double crochet front post double crochet so making a front post double crochet front post double crochet so making a front post double crochet stitch perfect okay next stitch is a back post double crochet stitch so working that back post next stitch is a back post double crochet stitch so working that and third stitch here is a back post double crochet stitch so working that back post double crochet stitch great right continue this all the way across for row three I will meet you at the end of row three to show you how we end row three and the repeat pattern for the next few rows Great, the last three stitches will be three back post double crochets. One, two, and remember that chain two does not count as a stitch, so we're going to ignore that and make our back post right there. Perfect. Great, we have just finished row three. Moving on to row four, we will chain two, one, two, turn our work. Now for row four through row eight, we're just going to continue doing what we did for row three. We will just elongate this row, these rows. So if the stitch below was a front post double crochet stitch, we will make a front post double crochet stitch. If the stitch below was a back post double crochet stitch, we will make a back post double crochet stitch and repeat that all the way across ending with three post stitches and then chaining two to get to the next row that's it so go ahead and continue repeating this pattern through the end of row eight i will meet you at the end of row eight to show you what we do for row nine in the middle section of this top you are doing a great job. Keep up the great work. Perfect, great, so this is row eight. We just finished row eight. 
here is what you should be looking at. This really bulky band will be the very bottom of your top. So we started on the bottom and we're working our way up. So when we start working row nine, row nine is the beginning row of the middle section. So we're changing up the pattern now. To get to row nine, you will chain four. One, two, three, four. Turn your work. That chain four counts as your first treble crochet stitch and will actually take that very first stitch space. So our next stitch will be a treble crochet stitch in that second stitch space. Oops. I'm gonna yarn over two times. One, two, three. Perfect. You will chain one skip one stitch and make one treble crochet stitch in the next two stitch spaces. One, two, chain one, skip one stitch and treble crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, three. Perfect. That is the repeat pattern for row nine. Chain one, skip one, treble crochet in the next two stitches. Then chain one, skip one, treble crochet in the next two stitches. Repeat this pattern all the way across for row nine. I will meet you at the end of row nine to show you how it looks at the end of row nine. The repeat pattern for row 10 on through the rest of the center sec middle section of this top. Chain one, skip one, treble crochet. All right, chain one, skip a stitch, and you will treble crochet in the last three stitch spaces to close row nine. One, two, and three. Great. Okay, so this is what row nine will look like. See how you can see how there are two treble stitches right next to each other, and then you will chain one, skip a stitch space, and then make two more treble stitches right next to each other. That is how row nine will look, ending with three treble crochet stitches. To move on to row 10, you will chain four, one, two, three, four. For this whole entire middle section, to get to the next row, you will always chain four. That counts as your first treble crochet. Turn your work. That first treble crochet does take the stitch space of the very first space, so the next stitch you will make is a treble crochet stitch in the very next stitch. One, two, three. There we go. Then you will chain one, skip the next stitch space, and in that chain one space, you will crochet around it. One, two, three. So it'll look just like that. There we go. So the skipped stitch space was this last treble crochet stitch and you will work your treble crochet stitch over that chain one. Okay, you will make two treble crochet stitches right next to each other. So treble crochet in the next stitch space. Perfect. Then chain one, skip the next stitch space and treble crochet in that chain one space. Treble crochet in the next stitch. Perfect. Chain one, skip the next stitch space, treble crochet in that chain one space. Perfect. Treble crochet in the next stitch space. 
And that is the repeat pattern. All right, go ahead and continue on. I will meet you at the end of row 10 to show you how we close row 10, what that looks like, and then the repeat pattern for the rest of this middle section of your crocheted top. Great, we are at the end of row 10 here. So I'm gonna chain one, skip the next stitch space, treble crochet in that chain one stitch. And I will actually treble crochet in the next two stitches for a total of three treble crochets to end the row. That last stitch will go in the fourth chain of that chain four treble crochet. Okay, so here is the very end of row 10. You can see, stretch that out. So you can see the chain one, skip, and how there's three stitches to close the row. All right, so for row 11 through the end of row 34, we are just repeating row 10. That's all we're doing. For each row, 11 through 34, you will begin by chaining four. One, two, three, four. You will turn your work. That chain four will always be your first treble stitch and will always take that very first stitch space, okay? Your next stitch will always be a treble crochet stitch in your very next stitch space. Perfect. And then you repeat the chain one, skip the next stitch, treble crochet in that chain one space. and then treble crochet in the very next stitch. All right, and then chain one, skip the next stitch space, and treble crochet in that chain one space. Treble crochet in the very next stitch space. Perfect, okay. So here, let's, let me pause, let me show you what it looks like stretching out these stitches so you can really see what's going on here. So yes, repeating the pattern with two treble crochets right next to each other, and then chain one, skip one, skip one stitch, and then treble crochet in the next two stitches, and then chain one, skip one, chain or treble crochet in the next two stitches. That's the repeat pattern for row 11 through the end of row 34. Now, honestly, what we're doing right now is we're building up the middle section of this Tiffany top, okay? If you would like your Tiffany top to be longer than that 27 inches that I mentioned before that I'm making this top, this is where you're gonna deviate. You can add as many rows in this middle section that you want and it will not affect anything, okay? It will just make your top longer. So if you have a really long torso or if you just want this top to hit lower on your thigh, go for it. Make as many rows as you want that'll hit that measurement, that dimension that you are looking for. But for us, that 27 inch top rectangular section, we are just going to repeat this row through the end of row 34. I will meet you at the end of row 34 to show you how the last three rows that we're going to do to finish up this rectangular section. Chain one, skip that next one, treble crochet in the chain one stitch, and treble crochet in the next. Great, we have just finished row 34 and ready to move on to row 35. Or if you have worked through the middle section, however many rows you wanted your middle section to be, now we're working on the next row where the pattern changes up. All right, this is towards the very top of our rectangular section where our shoulders will be. To move on to row 35, we will chain two. One, two. We will turn our work, and our work is much bigger now. For row 35, that chain two does not count as a stitch, does not. So our very first stitch will be in that first stitch space. We are making one double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. We will also put a double crochet stitch over that chain one stitch space. This is the perfect row to count how many stitches, how many double crochet stitches you are making 
all the way across. So your first stitch will be in that very first stitch space, double crochet, and double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Okay, let me get you a few rows or a few stitches in. And definitely that chain one stitch will just go over that chain one and double crochet over it. Okay, that's it. That's all we're doing for row 35. Count the number of double crochet stitches that you make. Make sure you're staying on count. You should have the same number of double crochet stitches here at row 35 that you did down here in this section. Okay, go ahead and make one double crochet each stitch all the way across. I'll meet you at the end of row 35 to show you what we do next. We're so close to being done with this first panel. It's very exciting. Okay, great, just finished row 35, finished our whole row of double crochet stitches. For row 36, how it changes. We chain two, one, two. We turn our work. That chain two does not count as a stitch. Okay, so that means that our very first stitch will be over that first double crochet. We repeat what we did in the beginning section with three front post double crochet stitches and then three back post double crochet stitches and then three front post double crochet stitches, three back post double crochet stitches. Repeat this pattern all the way across for row 36. I will meet you at the end of row 36 to show you what that looks like and how we make our way to row 37. So going around that first double crochet stitch, there's our first front post, second front post, third front post, and then three back post double crochets. One, <clears throat> two, three. Perfect. And repeat three front post double crochets. This is the part of the tutorial where I help assist you with joining yarn if you run out of yarn in the middle of your project. All right, for example, that is where I'm at right now. So I figured this was a great opportunity for me to show you how I join yarn to my project. I use what is called the invisible knot. If you are unfamiliar with this, oh, please do stick around. If you already know what the invisible knot is, go ahead and skip this little section. It's really quick though, if you want to just keep working on whatever you're working on and make your way through this project. So let's say that you've been crocheting and you're running out of yarn and you need to attach more yarn to your project. Take the yarn that is attached to your working project and have that yarn go in one direction. Take the brand new yarn brand new skein that you want to join to your project and have that yarn go the opposite direction. Bud those up next to each other. Take this side of the two strings, take two fingers and wrap those two strings around your two fingers. Take that tail, wrap the tail over the two strings between your fingers and then Pull that tail, remove your fingers, and it forms a little knot on this side. Follow the two strings to the other side here. Take two fingers, wrap the two strings around your two fingers. Take the little tail, go over the two strings between your fingers so that the tail is coming out towards your fingernail. Grab the tail remove your two fingers, pull, and that makes a little knot on this side. So now you have two knots here in your yarn. Grab this yarn that's attached to your work. Grab this yarn that's attached to the new ball of yarn. Pull those two strings and the knots will come in towards each other until they, those knots are right against each other 
and that knot is really strong. It is super strong, not going anywhere. Take your scissors. Cut the tails really close to that knot. Don't worry about this coming undone. It never does unless you accidentally cut the knot itself. But I will cut those little tails that short. Super short. This nail or this knot is secure. It is strong and it's not going anywhere. I've used this knot so many times. It's called the invisible knot. It is incredible. And what I love most about this really strong knot is that you can continue working your project without stopping. All right, so I have three front posts. Next would be three back posts, double crochet stitches. And then three front posts. And I've already transitioned from my yarn that was working on my project to the brand new skein. And when you go back to look at where that join was, let me help you out because it camouflages so well. It is, where are you? I'm like right here and I can barely see it right here. There is the knot right there, but it camouflages right into the work. You have nothing to address at the end of the project. You have no ends to weave in. You don't need to go to the end of one side or the other to attach yarn and waste that last few yards of yarn that were attached or remaining on that skein. It's amazing, super awesome. If you want to use it, I think that's awesome. If you don't want to use it, if you have your own method that you prefer, use whatever works best for you. All right, continue on, and I will meet you with the next step. Three, remember that chain two did not count as a stitch, so we are going to ignore that chain two entirely. Okay, we just reached the end of row 36 onto the very last row of this rectangular panel, which is row 37. We are going to chain two. We're going to turn our work. Perfect. And like we did before, we're going to try to carry on this pattern, the front posts with the front posts, the back posts with the back posts. Continue this pattern all the way to the very end of row 37. I'll meet you there to show you how we tie off this work. All right, so yarn over, very first stitch, front post. All right, last three back post double crochets, two and three. Oh, missed it. There we go. Okay, remember, we don't do anything with that last chain two. It's not a stitch for this pattern. We have just finished row 37. That was the very last row for this rectangular section, unless you added more rows in the middle here. But still, this last row here that we just finished is the total last row. You wanna take your scissors and cut your yarn leaving a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Then taking your crochet hook, yarn over that tail, pull that tail through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight for a slip knot to close your work. And rectangle section, rectangular section number one is complete. We have just finished that. What you want to do now is you want to repeat this exact same pattern that you just made a second time. This is panel one, or known as our front panel. We now need to make panel two, which is the back part of our top. So we want this, both of these to be identical. So just repeat everything you just did for this whole section, and I will meet you as soon as you are done and tie off your last row to show you how we join these two sections, these two panels together to make our actual top. Once you've made your two panels, go ahead and put each panel lined up on top of each other. What we're going to do now is join these two panels together to actually make our Tiffany top. Find the side of the panel that you want 
to present out to people, that you want people to see. That side of the panel is the side that you're gonna have on the inside here. The side that you're gonna have facing upward is the side that you don't want people to see. Maybe there's a yarn flaw or maybe there is like a little color blotch or something that you don't necessarily want anybody else to see. And you're gonna want that side on the outside because what we're gonna do is we're going to join these two sides together and then we're going to pull this inside out and so the side that's on the inside here is the side that you want people to see. The side that is up right now is the side that you're going to want on the inside of this Tiffany top. Okay? If it doesn't matter, they look identical, then it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, once you have aligned both panels on top of each other, now you're going to want to pull out your stitch markers. Okay, we're going to now identify where the armholes will be and where we're going to join along the top of the garment so that way we know where we're actually joining and where we need to stop. For this garment right here, I wanted my armholes to be larger, so I made my armholes 10 inches long. So this is the side of the garment that I want to leave open because that's where my arm is going to go. And I made mine 10 inches long. If you want your armhole to be bigger, then make it bigger. Make this hole much wider and just move this stitch marker further down, okay? If, you're, if you want your armhole to be tighter, then move this stitch marker up and you're going to join all the way up here, leaving this smaller armhole available. Okay, that's all you have to worry about. I put the top stitch marker in the top corner here. That's how I want to do it. If you want your armhole to start down a little bit further on the garment, then move this stitch marker down and just know that this join will be coming down on the side of the work as well. So my I have two different color stitch markers. The orange stitch markers are for my armhole and I'm leaving this side open between the orange stitch markers and I will be joining the rest of the side. Now on the top of my garment, the purple stitch markers, that is where I am going to join and the part in between is the part that I'm going to leave open because that's obviously going to be where my head will go. What I did to figure out this part of the garment is I measured the width of my garment. Now this particular garment that I made here is 28 inches wide because I wanted my head section to be larger where maybe I can have a shoulder pop out, make it really comfortable, cozy. I measured 28 inches wide, divided that in half. So I found the 14 inch mark where it's directly the middle. Okay, so now I have 14 inches right here. And then I divided that in half again. So right here is seven inches. And if I measure, that's exactly seven inches. That's what I wanted. I wanted only a quarter of this side and a quarter of this side to be joined with a, the whole middle section open. If you want more of a sleeve, go ahead and join further in and leave the, the head section open. But what I highly recommend you start with is finding the very center of the garment, so measuring the full width of the garment, finding the center, and then knowing, okay, this is where my head is going to pop out of. <laughs> How many inches from side to side do I need to give myself to be comfortable? If you want it to be tighter, make it tighter. If you want it looser, make it looser. There's a lot of room to play here, a lot of room to adjust and make it your own. All right, so that is how I found my dimensions. Feel free to find your dimensions. Write them down to help you because what you do on one side you want to copy on the other side, that way it's even, symmetrical, and not lopsided. So to join, here's how I join. Take the crochet hook that you used for the rest of the project, and take the same color yarn, the exact same yarn that you used for the project. What we're going to do is single crochet stitch these two pieces together. The reason why we need to single crochet stitch is because these stitches right here are a double crochet or a chain two, and these stitches here on the side of the work, they're a chain four. So we can't really slip stitch because that will just 
create a whole lot of chaos. It's a lot easier for us to judge off of a single crochet stitch join. So beginning with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. In that corner space, not in a stitch, but in that corner space, both sides, that's where we're going to insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through, got two loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull that yarn through for a single crochet. Now this stitch was a double crochet stitch, so we need to put a second single crochet stitch in that space. Next row, this was a chain two or a double crochet stitch, so we will need to put two single crochet stitches in the side of that row. Great, next row, two single crochet stitches, one, two. If it's a little thick, that is perfectly fine. Just work those single crochet stitches over to join. Again, we're working both panels together, joining them together. So next row, two single crochet stitches, one, two. Next row, two single crochet stitches, one, two, two single crochet stitches, one, two, we're still in this section, so two single crochet stitches, one, two, and I think this is the last row, yep, of those front post back posts, so two single crochet stitches. Perfect. So we should have a total of 16 stitches here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. On track. Awesome. Great. Okay, now we are on to the treble crochet stitches. So grabbing the very last treble crochet stitch on this side, last treble crochet stitch on that side, we're going to make four single crochets in the side of each treble crochet row. So one, two, three, four. Great. Next, one, two, three, four. Just like that, guys. All the way through, joining these two panels together. All right, so go ahead and continue doing this for single crochet stitches in the side of your treble crochet rows all the way up to where you put your stitch marker. That's where you will stop. I will meet you at this stitch marker to show you how we tie off and where we go next. I just met up with my row marker, stitch marker. I can remove that now. I'm gonna grab my scissors, cut a tail long enough for me to weave in my ends at the end of the project. Yarn over my tail, pull it through the loop on my crochet hook, pull tight for a slip knot, and I have just finished joining one side of my Tiffany top. What I'm going to do next is work on the exact other side of the Tiffany top. That way I can just repeat exactly what I just did, but on this side. It keeps me on track and helps me to make sure that everything is symmetrical and even. Okay, just repeat what we did on the other side, beginning in the corner. Remember that this whole section right here, we will make two single crochets in the side of each row. You should end this section with 16 single crochet stitches. Once you get to these treble crochet stitches, you are making four single crochets in the side of each row and working that all the way up till you hit your stitch marker. So I'll meet you at the stitch marker to show you what to do next. You've got this. You're doing a great job. Four, great, oh, okay, so I have come upon my row marker, my stitch marker here. What I want to do is I want to count how many rows I joined up the other side to make sure I'm symmetrical on both sides of the work. It would be awful if my armholes were different sizes. So looking at this side, coming to the treble crochets because those are the easiest to identify quickly and count. 
Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen rows right there. All right, so let me come to this side that I am still currently working on. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Great, so I need to work this one last row. That way I am symmetrical and even on both sides. So I'm gonna remove this stitch marker and make four single crochets in this last row. Two, three, four. Grab my scissors, I am done with this side. Perfect. Okay, great. Now last thing I am working on is the top section of this Tiffany top. So I made it so that my top was just along this side right here. I didn't go down onto the side of the work. It's really just a join at the top of the work. So I can remove this orange stitch marker because it does not apply to the armhole anymore. And I will remove this purple stitch marker because that is where I'm going to begin my join. Working along the top is a lot easier than working along the sides because you will just utilize those stitch spaces all the way across. Grabbing the yarn, beginning with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends, slip knot, crochet hook, perfect. We will again single crochet join these two sides together. So starting in the very last stitch here and attaching the very last stitch on the other panel. Gonna yarn over, pull through two loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through both loops for a single crochet stitch. And then just continue making one single crochet stitch in each stitch space all the way up till you reach your row marker. All right, here we go. Just single crocheted up to my row marker. I'm going to remove my row marker and single crochet in that very last stitch space that the row marker was in. Boom, right there. Grab my scissors, cut tail, yarn over, pull through loop, pull tight, and this side of the top of this garment is now joined together. Okay, so we can remove these two stitch markers because we do not need them there to help us keep those two sides together anymore. A crochet hook, yarn, tail long enough to weave in ends, attaching, perfect. All right, and just repeat exactly what we did on the other side. So entering your crochet hook into the top of the very first stitch or the outermost stitch. Got all those tails. We're gonna leave the tails out. Do not crochet over the tails. For me, it never sticks. They never stay put. So leave the tails out so we can weave them in properly so they stay put. Yarn over, pull through, two loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops for a single crochet stitch and continuing to make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way up until you reach your stitch marker. All right, continue on and I'll see you very soon. Oh, coming upon that very last stitch here. So I'm going to move my row marker, stitch marker, and I'm going to single crochet in the same stitch that was just in. But before I tie off this yarn, I want to make sure that I have the exact same number of stitches on this side of the work as I do on this side of the work to make sure it is symmetrical. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, Okay, let's look over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
23. Oh, I was off. I'm glad that I counted. So one more stitch to make it even. 24. Very, very important. All right, cutting tail. Yarn over, pull through loop, pull tight for slip knot, and we are done joining all of the sides that we wanted to join. What we do next is we flip this inside out. Great. What flipping this inside out does is it makes the join look so much smoother. Here it's very abrupt. It's got a line, a point, but on this side it's very smooth and it looks the same way on the sides of the garment. We want to have this, the work facing the direction we want because the next step that we're going to work for this Tiffany top is making a single crochet border around the neck and around the armholes just to clean things up and make sure everything stays secure. Looking at this first armhole, I am going to begin making my stitches. So here is where the shoulder is, the top, all of these rows of double crochets and post stitches. Looking at the first row of treble crochet stitches, that's where I want to begin, is that first row of treble crochet stitches. So taking my yarn, long enough tail for me to weave in my ends, create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, perfect, ready to go. So finding that first row of treble crochets, and this is the armhole, okay? So I'm kind of working on the back of the work. Does that make sense? So armhole starting here, but I wanna flip it forward so the pretty part of the stitch is facing outwards. First treble crochet row, insert my crochet hook into that space right along the side of the work. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both loops for a single crochet stitch. There's one single crochet. We want to make four single crochets on the side of each treble crochet row. So two, three, four. Next row, treble crochet, four single crochets. One, two, three, four. So let me go ahead and make my way down to this join here at the bottom and I'll meet you at this join here at the bottom to show you how I get around and start working my way back the other side. Remember, with these treble crochet rows, we're making four single crochets in the side of each row. One, two, three, four. Okay, so working the armhole, I made my way down to the join here, where you can see the two sides have joined together along the side of the work. I'm going to work two single crochets along this side, and then two single crochets along that side. It will make those four single crochet stitches squish down a bit, but it will make for a very clean, seamless border around that armhole. And then we just start working our way around the other side of that arm. So continuing to make four single crochet stitches in the side of each treble crochet row all the way up. And I will meet you when the work turns into those post stitches here. Four. Oh, great. Now we have made it to the section on the top of the shoulder where we have our double crochet post stitches. For these rows, we will either have a double crochet or a chain two on the side of each row. We will only make two single crochet stitches on the side of each row. There should be a total of six rows right here. All we should end with is a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So three rows on this side of all these tails and three rows on this side of all these tails. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, hop over those tails that join. Next row seven, Oops. easy to grab a tail, try not to grab a tail. <laughs> All right, move out of the way tail. There we go, seven, eight, 
9, 10, last row here, 11, 12. Perfect. We have met up to the very beginning of this border. We're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch right here and that closes off the border for around our sleeve. And we are done with this sleeve. Go ahead and separate all those so we know what we're working with here. Grab your scissors, cut tail, and yarn over the yarn that is still we're still working with. Yarn over that tail, pull through the loop on our crochet hook, and pull tight. And that closes off that armhole and that border should really clean it up making it easy to see easy to work with and making all of the join sections cleaned up okay so repeat what we just did here on the other side for our second armhole and i'll meet you when this is all done to start on the neck section Great, made my way all the way around, slip stitching into the first single crochet to close off this border. Long tail. Yarn over, pull through, and knot. Great. All right, so the armholes are now done. The border is on them. Last thing we've got, we've got to do is the neck. Next going to be super simple because we can just insert our crochet hook into each stitch all the way around and we don't have to worry about the sides of rows. Long enough tail, slip knot, crochet hook, great. Okay, so starting on the bottom because we want our crochet stitches to show the right way. Okay, single crochet in each stitch around. One single crochet in each stitch. Once you get to these join sections, I'll meet you here to show you how I get around this side, and then I will release you to finish the other side. Okay, working the neck section, getting to the first join here, stitch. All right, so here is where we joined, right there. So we're gonna hop over the join and make our way to the other side in that stitch space, and then flip everything over and continue working along one stitch at a time, one single crochet in each stitch, all the way across this side of the neck. All right, go ahead and continue along this side and I'll meet you here to show you how I close off my neck border and then we're done. Okay, coming to the other join right here, I see all the tails that helps me identify the join. So one single crochet on this side of the join there's that join right there and slip stitch into the very first single crochet stitch. There it is. See the tail? First single crochet stitch. I actually got the tail too. There we go. Slip stitch to close. Long tail. Yarn over, pull through, pull tight. And that is my secure knot, my join. And that is going to be the top of my neck. Now, if you would like to deviate from this pattern, you can absolutely make another layer of single crochet stitches, either here with the arm, here with the neck, and just elongate that a little bit. You could add some frills. You can really just do whatever you want here for the armhole section. That border provides a whole lot of possibilities. But that's it. Your Tiffany top is complete. The only thing we have left to do is weave in all of these ends. And there are a lot of them. So go ahead and pull out your yarn needle, tapestry needle, 
and weave in all these ends. If you need help with a technique for weaving in your ends that works better than maybe something you're currently using, I have a video right here that you can click on and it provides you many different ways to weave in your ends and join your yarn that you may find work better for you than what you're doing right now. Or it's just a different way, different technique that you thought was really cool. You did it. You have successfully made the Tiffany top. I hope you had fun. All right, so what did you think of the Tiffany top? Was it easy enough to follow? What did you think of the stitches? Let me know in the comment section below this video if there is anything else that I could help out with to make it better to understand, or if you are just super excited to make your own and get started right away. If you liked this Tiffany top, you might also really enjoy these other tutorials right here. Also check out this tutorial, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day, and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.